I don't uh, quibble with labels. Uh, I think we all recognize that this is a particular problem that has roots in Muslim communities uh, and that the Middle East and South Asia are sort of ground zero for us needing to win back hearts and minds, particularly when it comes to young people. Uh, but I, I think we do ourselves a disservice in this fight uh, if uh, we are not taking into account the fact that the overwhelming majority of Muslims reject this ideology. Hmm. Welcome back to the arena. I'm Michael Corrin. And that's a fair point. That's a fair point. That's probably the most reasonable or courageous that President Barack Obama has been. Because I don't meet people who claim that all Muslims are terrorists. Anyone who would do is an idiot or a bigot. They're not to be listened to. But too many people simply painfully deny any link, any segue between an interpretation of Islam and terrorism. Look, is it racist or Islamophobic to criticize Islam? Is Charlie Hebdo publishing the unpardonable? Reverend Majed El Shafi is a human rights advocate from Egypt. He's just come back from Paris, though, where he's been addressing these very issues. Welcome back to you, sir. It's a pleasure being here. You come from a Muslim culture. Yes. Uh, you may be Christian, but your culture is Islamic, Egyptian, Arabic. There are, there are many Muslims who do reject terror, who are they're uncomfortable when, and they're good people, but they feel uncomfortable when we even mention Islam and terrorism in the same sentence. I think they probably admit there is some sort of connection, but they don't like to listen to it. The problem that is not that they don't just want to listen to it, they don't do anything to stop it. Mm. And this is the main big problem that we're facing. When I went to Paris, just returned back yesterday, we met with the Muslim community, we met with the leaders from the Muslim community, we met with leaders with the Jewish community, with the Catholic Church, and we was able to understand, like many of the Muslim community would say, we are very sorry for what's happened in Paris. But the magazine, Charlie Hebdo, we should not mock our religion. Mm. There is no but. There is no but. Yeah. You should not say but. This shouldn't happen. No. Uh, if, if this magazine, and by the way, Charlie Hebdo is the best of the French society and the worst of the French society. I agree. They will, they will mock Muslims. They will mock Jews. They will mock Christians. They will mock the Pope. Mm. They will mock everybody and every, everything. Mm. But you don't kill them. You don't go and shoot 12 of them, include police officers. Mm -hmm. This is just not acceptable. But you know, it wasn't just many Muslim leaders who said this. And, and many of them, those who, who are lying, who don't actually reject terrorism, I, I have no time for at all. But there were people who did viscerally reject terrorism. But as you say, it was, but you shouldn't. The Pope also at least implied, if not stated that. There were other secular journalists, major figures who said, you, you shouldn't mock like this. You're asking for trouble. I, I found that to be appalling. Absolutely. And I, in a matter of fact, maybe this is the only point that I disagreed with the Pope, this Pope at yeah. least, because uh, there is freedom of expression. You can sue them if you want. You can go to the court. And by the way, I think the Catholic Church have like 12 cases against them in the court. Like they, they, they sued them. You can sue them, you can do another article against them, you can find them in any peaceful way, you can do a demonstration in front of their yeah. magazine. Yeah. But to shoot somebody to kill, there is no but. Mm. It is wrong and, and full stop. There is no but they shouldn't mark Islam. No, this is wrong, full stop. And that's what we know. No one is obliged to read the magazine. The magazine, in fact, we were chatting about this before the show, mm -hmm. it was pretty much moribund. It, was, it, it may well have closed. The, the numbers were down. It, it, was, it was losing money. It's now sold millions of, of, of the, the last issue. It has more money it knows what to do with. So the way to, if you really think it's blasphemous, I don't know if, I, I mean, the term is it's almost nonsensical in the modern world, simply don't read it and it will fade. The market will take care of that. But of course, the opposite has been done now, a, a tragedy. People are dead and the magazine will continue to sell in very large numbers. Iran, once again has uh, invited people to write, to, to, to draw cartoons denying the Holocaust, mocking the Holocaust, talking about the Holocaust, because it's trying to, to draw some sort of absurd juxtaposition. Well, if you say we can, they can do this about Muhammad. Now, no Western state has invited people to mock Muhammad. No Western state has held a competition. And also denying something which is a, an, an historical truth is different from just poking fun at a religious leader. Also, when people deny the Holocaust, it's not, I'm not sure if it happened, it's a direct attack on a minority. People who mock the Holocaust, who deny the Holocaust, don't stop there, they then want Jews to suffer. Totally different, but that's how Iran, one of the, one of the, the icons of Islamist ideology now, is responding.
Absolutely. And to be honest with you, like this is not surprising coming from Iran or coming from an extreme government, mm -hmm. uh, Saudi Arabia and so on and so forth. But in the truth and the reality, even in the response, as you said, the magazine was 60,000 60, copy yeah. and they were thinking about shutting it down. Now, mm. 7 million copies. 60,000 to 7 million. 60,000 oh. to 7 million copy. People standing in the street, yeah. they, they no copy. Mm. And Muhammad, Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad is on the cover. Yeah. So the plan of the enemy backfired now with very heavy price, of with course, 12 souls. But in the end, France, Australia, Canada is on a crossroad. Mm. Now, are we taking our country back from the extremists? Are we able to cooperate with the Muslim community? Now, in France, many people will not tell you that. 12 mosques, 20 mosques was attacked in France mm. after the incident. And that's also wrong. Of course. Because course. that's exactly what the terrorists want to do. Mm -hmm. They want us to lose who we are, how we're accepting everybody, and how we're welcoming everybody. Mm -hmm. But we have to take our countries back. We have to make sure that the extremists that the Muslim community we are all working together in order to kick this extremist out. Let me ask you, but you've just come back from France. Mm -hmm. There are a large number of Muslims in France who do reject, actually they reject their religion too, but they, they do reject terror. The majority of, of those born North African birth or descent in, in France seem to reject Islam at this point. They, they, no, they no longer self-identify as Muslims. The police officer who was killed, the man who rescued people in the supermarket, That's great. the MPs who sponsored the, the bill against the, the burqa. They, this is genuine. There, there are a number of them. We had the mayor of Rotterdam in the Netherlands speaking out as well. Mm. There's a handful of people like that in Canada, but just a handful. I, can, I think I know all of those people who are active in condemning the extremes of their religion. There aren't many. There is only many because uh, part of it, they put their, their head in the sand. And, mm. and, and the problem that they are, if you are not part of the solution, you are part of the problem. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Uh, but in the end of the day, this will affect the Muslim community more than anybody else. This will cause people to hate them. This will cause, if there is no clear communication, if there is no uh, accountability, People will start to hate them in their heart, and that will cause discrimination against them, and that will backfire on them more than any other community. So it's better that we work together, put each other hands in each other, and cooperate. It is. I mean, I don't see that hostility. I, I think in Canada, people have. A mosque was attacked outside of, I think it was Calgary, uh, when a terrorist attack occurred last year. The following day, a group of people, it was graffiti. The following day, a group of people got together, including a soldier on leave, to make sure the graffiti was. Was After that, there were three mosques attacked in Montreal. Really? And nobody did anything about it. Mm. What I am saying, terrorists kill also uh, Muslims in, uh, in Pakistan, of course. Uh, Nigeria, Boko Haram, uh, Iraq, and uh, the, the Islamic State. So what's preventing you to sit down with us and say, um, as a Muslim community and as a Muslim leaders, sit down and say, we will not accept that. We'll stand side by side with you to fight the extremists, which is your enemy and my enemy too. Yeah. What preventing them from doing this? For that last question, we're out, we're out of time. Mm. Do we sometimes get it wrong by lumping all of the groups that are motivated partly by Islam together? I mean, we, we may condemn Hamas, for example, but when you throw in people, all the same groups, into ISIS and Al-Qaeda and the rest, I, I think that's clumsy, I think that's reductionist. I think it's simplistic. Uh, I agree with you. I agree with you. But in the end of the time, in the end of the day, we are fighting ideology. We're not just fighting okay. individuals. All right. And all of this group that you mentioned, they will share one ideology. Mm -hmm. And that's what we are fighting against. As always, enlightening. Thank you so very much indeed. It's a pleasure.